So I saw this thread on Reddit about how to control your emotions and my mind was blown by the amount of bullshit advice those guys give you. So you're in a stressful situation where you have to decide in a split second how to act to achieve the most effective result and the advice that those guys give you? Huh, just imagine you're at a beach. Imagine you're eating a coconut. Close your eyes and relax. Bro, get the f**k out of here. So I'm gonna go in depth about how to control your emotions the most effective way without this politically correct bullshit. So let's start. So the times where I had to control my emotions were always related to conflicts with other guys. Most of the time it was during daytime and obviously during nighttime at the club. As you guys know, the club is a toxic environment. People come drunk, they wanna fight you. And it may surprise you, but I had a lot of conflicts also at the gym. So these were the environments where I had most of my conflicts happening. So how to control your emotions? Let's start with the easy scenario. It's 7.30 a.m., I slept 5 hours and I'm late for work. So I put some baggy clothes and I rush my way to work. So I'm driving my car and usually there is a problem with the parking spaces, but this time I found the parking right near my workplace, which is super rare. So when I finish working, I go back to my car, so I approach the car and I see these green brownish things on my car. As I approach the car, I see that I didn't park under a tree. So as I'm getting closer and closer to my car, I see that my car is covered in shit. Like, literally shit, guys. So the windshield is covered in shit, the front and back, even the door handles, guys. You barely can see the inside of my car because all the glasses are covered in shit. Except for the driver's door handle. This is at least knew I need to get into my car somehow. And I'm not gonna lie, I was quite angry. At first I actually laughed. I'm like, is that shit for real? But then I realized that, yo, this shit is real. So I was ready to knock someone out for this shit because they crossed the line. They crossed the line. Maybe I accidentally hit some car when I parked in the morning because the way they made sure that each part of the car is covered in shit, that shit is personal, guys. It became personal. So I go to the other side of the car, the right side, and I see that I parked in a private parking. I'm like, okay, now it makes sense. And I'm gonna be transparent with you guys, it was marked. Yeah, the parking was marked, but it was marked with white paint, and the paint, the paint was entirely faded. So you could barely see the paint. So I look at the parking space, I look to my right, and I see a building. So the guy that owns the parking space clearly owns the building next to it. So I basically blocked his private parking for a whole day. But he could have called a tow truck to drag my car. He could have called the cops and the cops could track my phone number from the license plate. But that was the kind of guy that doesn't call the tow truck and he clearly doesn't call the cops. And soon you realize why. I was looking around and I saw that the entrance door to the building was one meter away from me. So I could ring the bell at any minute and confront the guy. So I started visualizing the scenario in my head. I'm gonna ring the bell, I'm gonna ask him, was that you? As soon as he says yes. You know what? As soon as I hear the why, I'm gonna knock him the fuck out. As soon as he says yeah, knockout. But I didn't want to do anything stupid, so I started to investigate the place and I saw that there are like 20 cameras, 10 cameras outside the building and 10 cameras inside. There was like a white fence, it wasn't high, so I could see the, the yard of the building, I could see the inside of the building. And there was a dangerous dog sign and I'm looking at my car and my car is one meter away from me, I'm smelling the shit and I'm like, that's his dog, maybe it's his shit, I don't know, maybe it's mixed. So I'm gonna knock the guy out and I'm gonna knock the dog out. At that point, it basically became a John Wick movie, but now I'm the villain. But I didn't wanna do anything stupid because, again, controlling my emotions, not doing anything crazy. Although I was angry as fuck, I had to control my emotions. So I decided to call my friend Ilya. So Ilya is a good friend of mine and he's working as a head security chief. So Ilya is basically at a point where he can look at a person's behavior patterns and say, okay, this guy is a millionaire. This guy, mafia, he's a bad guy. Not from the way they dress, but from the way they act. So I know I can trust him and he's clearly more objective than I am because that's not his car. So anyway, I call him and I explain the situation. Listen, Ilya, I went back to my car and my car is covered in shit. Like I parked in some private parking and this guy decided to put shit on my car. And bro, I really wanna confront him and knock this guy the fuck 
fuck out. And the first thing he says, Mark, leave. Those are dangerous people, leave. It's the mafia. Leave now. Take the L and leave. So I'm like, yo, bro, you're exaggerating. Like, it's probably some mentally unstable guy. So he goes in a heavy Russian accent. Describe this place. So I go, two black BMWs in front of me, white fans. Oh, and there are cameras basically everywhere. And then he cuts me in the middle of my sentence. Yo, Mark, leave. That's the mafia. Leave. Take the L and leave immediately before something bad happens. I'm gonna be honest, I thought Ilya was exaggerating a bit, but I was clearly in my emotions. I was just running the entire scenario in my head. Ring the bell, confront him, make him leave the house, knock him the f out. But I knew that I was in my feelings. I took the L and I left. And that's when I realized that it actually saved my life. So I'm in Thailand, I'm chilling by the pool, I'm with Ilya which was the guy that told me, yo, Mark, take the L and leave. And I see an article on Facebook about some criminal activity in my city. So I click on the article and then I see the exact house, the exact white fence, the exact parking space. That was the exact parking space where I parked three months ago. How crazy is that? And I'm like, yo, bro, you were right. Those are some dangerous people. Bro, that's the mafia. So yeah, like, Ilya's advice saved my life. I'm glad I took the L. Because those guys kill. Even if you look at them the wrong way, you're done. So, bro, good job, Ilya. My boy Ilya saved my life, man. And we had a great time in Thailand, so... Yeah, that's my boy. Being able to control my emotions literally saved my life. And you guys may say, it's so easy to take the L in those situations and just leave, but you're freaking with your ego. Because in those situations, the anger fuels you. Because you wanna hurt the guy that did it so f***ing bad. You can never let that happen. You always have to stay calm. The way you act is the most important. Calmness is not in your head. Calmness is the way you act. But that was like an easy situation where you can control your emotions easily. You have time to think. You have time to assess the situation and to imagine the outcome. You basically have time to digest what's happening. So that was a new level of controlling your emotions. Let's take it one step up. Now it's a medium level of controlling your emotions. So this time I'm at a club. It's 4 a.m., obviously everyone's drunk. I'm in a place called Malia. And Malia is like a party town in the middle of the Greek islands where people from all over the world just come to party and have a good time. Get drunk as f So I'm at a club with a good friend of mine. He sees a cute chick, a cute British chick, like blonde hair, like 10 out of 10. He approaches her. So now I'm by myself. So I'm dancing, I'm having fun, and from a distance I see a cute British chick. And I immediately start approaching her because she gave me the eye and so this club is quite big and this girl is like 20 meters away from me so I started approaching her and as I'm walking towards her some 6'5 giant British guy with a picky blinders haircut and sunburn bumps into me aggressively and he's like yeah mate watch where you're going yeah the fuck's wrong with ya so at this point I'm by myself I'm looking at my friend he's already making out with this British chick so I'm alone, and he's far away, I can't call him, it's a club. So I look at the guy like, he clearly wants to fight. And this guy is like a gang leader. You look at his right, two of his mates on the right. You look at the left, three of his mates are joining. So they're ready to fight. They're putting rings and shit. They want to break my face. So there are six of them and one of me. So these guys can jump me at any minute. So this whole thing happens in split seconds. So the first thing I do immediately, yo, sorry about that, bro. I didn't mean to. It's all good. Controlling my emotions and social skills. I'm not nervous. I'm not showing emotions. I just say it calmly. Yo, bro, it's all good. Sorry about that. Even though it's his fault, I act as if nothing happened. So again, you're controlling your emotions. You don't want to do anything stupid. Because this guy is drunk as fuck. So I look at him and he's shocked. He's quite shocked. He had this expression on his face like he wasn't expecting this reaction out of me. Like he was expecting me to say, yo, fuck off, I'm gonna knock you the fuck out. But I didn't. I stayed calm. 
So this guy wasn't responding, he was like looking at me quite shocked. So I immediately go shake his hand and say, yo bro, sorry about that, have a good night, yeah? And then he suddenly smiles, he's like, yo, sorry about that bro, it's all good. And then he leaves with his mates. I go join my friend, we have a great night. This chick I wanted to talk to disappeared, but I still had a great night. So the crazy part about it was that I saw the exact guy at a different club at the same night, and he actually came and shook my hand. So again, using social skills and controlling your emotions to get the best outcome for yourself. You have to be selfish, you have to think about the best outcome for you. And you're probably thinking, yo, you're a beta male, Mark. This guy disrespected you. And I'm gonna argue that this guy ain't worth the hassle. He's not worth fighting. Imagine the outcome. Okay, let's say I do fight him. I knock the guy out cold. What's the outcome? Even if I win, they're gonna kick me out of the club, I can get arrested, and my evening is pretty much ruined. Let's say I lose. Six of them, they knock me out cold, okay? I'm gonna end up in the hospital or maybe in jail. They're gonna kick me off the club and my evening is ruined. So in both outcomes, whether I win or whether I lose, it's not worth it, guys. In both outcomes, nobody wins. We both take the L. And if you guys saying this shit about alpha male, beta male, it just shows me that you haven't been to situations like that. Because I can die in this situation. Because drunk guys, they just swing, they just take whatever they can, he can get a beer bottle and pop it in my head and kill me. Drunk guys don't think logically, they, they don't think. So in situations like that, when someone tries to antagonize you, you give him zero emotional reaction. You don't want to give him a reason to start a fight with you. So zero emotional reaction, okay? It's super important. Because in those situations, your reaction can save your life. You just react as if nothing happened. Nothing happened, okay, you bumped into me. It's all good, bro, have a great night. It's all good. And you never fight inside venues. The drunk guys that are in these venues, they will kill you over the smallest things. They're gonna kill you. So that's life or death. And if it's life, you end up in jail. So nobody wins. If you wanna punish this guy, you can wait outside the venue and wait for him to turn into some dark alley. But still, in both outcomes, whether you win or lose, whether you knock him out or not, you lost. Because the fact that you're triggered means that this guy got into your head. He got you to fight. He wants to fight. Are you gonna give him that? No, you're not. The f*** you want. You won't give him that. Zero emotional reaction. Because trust me that if this guy did it to me, he did it to probably like 20 other people. And in 99% of the times, those people reacted emotionally. They were like, yo bro, the f*** your think you're doing? Bumping me like that in the club. I'm gonna f*** you up. You're not gonna react like that. If you react like that, you already lost. I'm telling you, you lost. So drop your ego in those situations. Drop your ego and the best outcome is not to fight. It's simply not to fight. If you give these guys exactly what he wants, which is to fight, you're a beta male. That's the beta move. Because you just let the guy control your emotions and influence you. Do you think that's the alpha move? Yeah, let's fight, bro. Now, before we go to the third scenario, there is one last thing I want to say. If these situations happen to you, that's a great sign. If someone bumps into you, yo, bro, that means you're doing something right. Because this guy is jealous. And let me explain why. He probably saw me, like, dancing around the club, and it felt bad. Because all of the other people at the club are stuck on their phones. And he sees me, I'm actually the one that's having fun. I'm confident, I'm dancing. And he's like, yo, let's see what this guy's made of. I'm gonna bump into him, let's see. Because think about it, nobody cares about the low-key guy that's just handling his business. Like, yeah. Nobody cares about this guy. But the guy that's having fun, they're gonna come and test you. Those guys get their confidence levels from putting other people down. So this guy saw me, he immediately wanted to test me, and he got zero emotional response. That's why he was shocked, like... You're supposed to react differently. So guys, if this shit happens to you, that's a good sign, but you have to know how to handle those situations. So zero emotional response. Zero, okay? Especially if you hang out a lot in the nightclub environment, so it's quite toxic, like everyone's drunk, maybe they took some drugs, they just wanna f*** 
and anyone can be triggered over the smallest things. In the first situation with the car, I could have ring the bell and knocked the guy out, but I didn't. And it saved my life. I took the L and I left. Because the outcome, the best outcome for me was to leave. In this situation, in the club situation, I could just punch the guy, knock him out cold, but the situation would have been against me. The outcome would have been against me, whether I win or whether I lose. So do not fight unless you have to fight. I repeat, do not fight unless you absolutely have to fight, okay? But if you do end up fighting, beat the f out of the guy. And now you will see what I'm talking about. So let's go one step up in the difficulty level. Now it's like an extreme level of controlling your emotions. What happens if you absolutely have to fight? So it's 8 p.m., I'm at the gym, I'm doing back and legs, and the gym is quite empty. So at my gym, there is this place that is dedicated only to squats and deadlifts. We got three squat racks and one leg press machine. So I go over and I see a barbell with one plate each side, which is 60 kilos. I don't know what's your gym culture, but at my gym, nobody returns the weight. So it's quite normal to see like a barbell with plates and no one's using it. So I go over, I put my tower on the bar to mark the territory, you guys know it, and I stretch for a minute. So on my right side, like here, two meters away, there's this guy that's working on the leg press machine. You'll realize why it's relevant in a minute. So I start warming up, I do a set, I rest for a minute, and then I do another set. So I add two more plates, one plate on each side. So I rest for a bit before the set, I kinda look at the gym. The gym is quite empty, I look at my right, I see the guy on the leg press machine, working as usual, nothing special. So literally, as I'm entering the set, I hear the guy from my right, the guy that's working on the leg press machine, he goes, Hey bro, I'm working with this barbell, get the f out of here! And I'm like, yo bro, I've been working on this bar for 5 minutes and you haven't said a word. And he's like, I don't give a f that's my barbell, so take down the plates! Now obviously I knew that this guy wasn't working with the barbell, because I was scanning the space that was dedicated for squats and deadlifts and this guy was working on the leg press machine all the time. So this guy was talking some bull it was clearly lying. So I thought, yo, maybe this guy's confused or something. So I said, yo, don't worry about it. Come join me. We can work out together. It's all fine. And this guy started going crazy. Yo, this is my barbell, so I don't want to work out with you. Take down the plates or I'm gonna fuck you up. Get the fuck out of here. I'm like, here we go again. Now we're at the gym. This is not a club. So he's not drunk, but this guy is clearly looking for an emotional reaction and I wasn't planning on giving him a reason to fight me. This guy either wants me to be triggered and fight him or he wants me to leave this place and I wasn't gonna let him do any of that. There are some people, like it's the small percentage that even if you will be nice and you will give him zero emotional reaction, they will still wanna continue with the conflict. So I wasn't emotional, but I just looked him dead in the eyes and I said, no. This guy was mad, I could see it on his face. And he goes, yo, if you leave this barbell, I'm gonna f you up. So I was like, no, I don't think so, but if you wanna join me, you're welcome, but I'm staying here. You can join me if you want. So this guy got zero emotional response for me and it even got him more triggered. Like this guy wanted to fight me so bad, guys. And this guy clearly realized that I'm gonna stand my ground. I'm not gonna leave just because he told me to leave. So I did my first rep, and as soon as I'm doing my second rep, this guy comes, takes off one plate out of my barbell, and the bar falls. At this point, now it's physical. I'm ready to fight, okay? So I'm going back, I'm taking a step backwards, because in these situations, you always have to keep your distance. So you're keeping your distance, and you never know when this guy's gonna swing at you. You just don't know, so you have to keep the distance. So he takes that 20 kilo plate, and he's like, I'm gonna knock you out with this plate, I'm gonna knock you out. So I'm like still keeping my distance. And I was calm, I wasn't like, yo, let's see you do it, let's see, let's see. I realized, okay, this guy is crazy. I'm not gonna rush him, I'm just waiting for him to come to me. Because it's the gym, so there are cameras everywhere. You look at the right camera, you look at the left, another camera. So they got all of the angles covered, so you can't do stupid shit. So in these situations, you always have to keep your cool and keep your distance, okay? Because he's gonna rush you any moment. You're not gonna encourage him, come try and knock me out. Because you have to stay focused, you have to stay calm, 
and you're waiting for him to come to you. He's gonna rush you, because this isn't MMA or boxing, okay? There are no rules, guys. Either he knocks you the f out, or you knock him out. So no matter how bad you f up this guy, they'll see that that was self-defense. Because even if the guy goes, come at me, bro, come at me, the cops can only see whoever rushes the other. The police only looks at the assault. So I'm holding my distance, but I did this Conor McGregor shit when I jumped like his fight with Aldo. So I'm waiting for the guy to come and I'm waiting with the counter left. I'm starting to visualize the knockout. He's gonna come at me, boom, left counter. So this mother rushes at me in a split second he picks up this rope this black rope that used for tricep extensions and i can see it in his eyes this guy is angry he doesn't want to beat me he wants to kill me this guy wants to kill so he's getting closer i take one step backwards and i go with the counter left and i fucking miss the counter left i miss so i feel like a hit on my forehead and i'm thinking this motherfucker just hit me with the fucking rope extension. So now this guy is holding my neck, but from the side. Somehow, I don't know how he actually grabbed my neck. This guy is not holding me from behind, and I'm not gonna give him hold me from behind, because if this guy is gonna hold me from behind, he's gonna choke me. And he's holding tight, man. I'm gonna give it to him. This guy is strong. So we're like wrestling a bit. He wrestles me to the right. I wrestle him to the left. So we're kinda moving a bit. We're both 6'2", we weight more or less the same, so neither of us can move the other. So we're basically stuck. So in a split second, I take my hand, my right hand, I gain some momentum, and I uppercut the shit out of him, guy. I think I broke his nose, man. So as soon as I hit his nose, this guy left me. Bro, he was crying like a little girl. And you see guys rushing. The whole gym came to this area. So now this guy is having a mental breakdown. So people give him a chair. He's sitting on the chair and he goes, This f***ing guy. This f***ing guy. <laughs> I still want to fight with him. So this guy sitting on his chair and for some reason he stopped making eye contact with me. So I go, Yo, bro, you don't fight at the gym. You want to fight me? Okay, outside, that's fine but you do not fight at the gym. You come to the gym to have a workout. You don't come to fight, bro. You wanna fight, you can go outside. You can go to a boxing club. So as soon as I said it, it triggered the hell out of this guy. I didn't say to trigger him. I just said, yo, bro, like, that's the gym. So you don't fight at the gym. And I'm not gonna lie, I really wanted to end this fight outside. I really wanted to knock this guy out. I'm gonna try knock you out, okay? And he goes, Come now, come outside, I'm gonna knock you out. So the adrenaline rushes, the testosterone goes up. I'm in animal mode, guys. I'm ready. So some guy comes from behind, he's holding me. He's like, yo, bro, just leave him alone. This guy is crazy. And the guy that I had a fight with suddenly rushes from the crowd. He wants to fight me, so he rushes. And a lot of people are holding him. And he's like, hold me, bro. You better hold me or I'm gonna f*** this guy up. Hold me, guys. <laughs> that was funny as and I'm thinking to myself, yo, bro, your adrenaline just went down. Go home, drink some green tea. And people still hold him. And he's like, hold me, hold me, guys. <laughs> at this point, I'm just looking at the guy and I'm laughing, bro. Like, that's a circus, okay? I was 20, this guy's like 29, 30. And this guy can't control himself. He can't control his emotions. You hear people telling him, yo, relax, bro, relax. And at this point, two minutes have passed and... The fight is over, like, I'm ready to go back to working out. And this guy clearly not. His nose is bleeding and he can't take the L. So anyway, eventually the guy relaxed. So I did my set. Then I went to the locker room to relax. And you see like guys come at me. Yo, bro, well done. You beat the shit out of him. Yo, the whole gym hated this guy. And even the trainer at the gym. Yo, bro, well done. You beat the shit out of him. And you know what's funny, guys? After I went on with my workout, I was doing some leg extensions and this guy was working out two meters next to me and we acted as if nothing happened. And I just kept thinking in my head, if this guy is gonna do anything stupid, I'm gonna knock him out for real this time. Because I know that this guy is emotional. He cannot control his emotions. He can pull up some crazy shit in a split second because he can't control himself. I wasn't gonna do anything, but still, if it was about to pop off, I was ready to fight, guys. So we trained two meters next to each other, and you can feel the tension, like people watching, yo, yo, it's about to go down with those guys. Luckily, the guy didn't do anything stupid, and each time I saw this guy, nothing happened, but he had, like, respect for me, you know, that respect you have 
after a fight, and this guy never bothered me ever since. So in those situations, as you see, that's a situation that you have to fight, okay? When you have to, you f***ing fight. But when someone antagonizes you, don't be like, yo, come with me, bro, come with me. No, you have to stay calm all the time. Because when you're calm, you can assess the situation quickly and you can act accordingly and you are always ready to fight. I repeat, you stay calm, but you are always ready to fight. Now, before I finish this video, guys, I have to talk about the most important thing. The same people that try and trigger you, the same people that want to fight you, they have zero confidence. Those people have to put someone down to level up their confidence. Isn't it sad? That's pathetic. These people cannot control their emotions. You probably know someone like that, some guy that's always getting into fights. Well, those are the people that can't control their emotions. Those people can get triggered from anything. You look at them the wrong way, you're the fuck's wrong with you, look at me like that, bro. But you're not gonna do that. You're gonna have the advantage because you're gonna control your emotions. You're gonna act calm as if nothing happened, but if he rushes, you're gonna knock him out. You do not get triggered. That is the most important part, guys. You don't give him emotional response. Because if you do it, you give the guy exactly what he wanted. Exactly. When you do not respond with emotions, you can make better decisions. Especially when you're under pressure. And that is your advantage. Think about Tommy Shelby. And he was under some serious pressure, like in every episode. Have you ever seen him getting crazy with his emotions? Yo, what do you mean, man? You don't. He stays calm. Because when he stays calm, he can make better decisions under pressure. And that's going to be your advantage in those situations. So who do you think is the beta male now? The guy that sees the situation, he stays calm, and he fights, if necessarily, he defends himself. Or the guy that shouts like a little girl, ah, you're this, you're that, ah, ah, and unable to control his emotions. So that's the mentality you have to adapt. You do not start fights, but you're gonna be the one that ends them. Control your emotions, zero emotional response, because it can save your life. I'll see you on the next video.